Foot Clan, this is the time of year when champions are made. Your starts, your sits, your streaming off the waivers, the trades you're going to make, you've got to check out all the tools we have. If you're not part of our community at jointhefoot.com, you are missing out on the Stream Finder, the Snapshot tool, and all sorts of resources and awesome people that can help you bring home the title this year. Jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. So excited to have you with us, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. That's the name. Andy, Mike, and Jason. It's a Wednesday show, Wednesday, October 21st. At the FF Ballers on Twitter. Like I said, I'm excited to have our fine listeners join us on this fine episode. We've got some mailbag on the show today. We've got the Thursday night preview. We have news to talk about. We got buy, sell. Mike's wearing a hat. That is, yeah. That is, I'm wearing uh, a hat. I'm wearing a hat too. <laughs> Jason, where's your hat? Oh man, yeah. I'm so embarrassed. I'm hatless right now. We are not far from a naked head over here. Yeah, that's what they call him. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. Oh, it's not. If, it's not growing in thicker. <laughs> that's for sure. Is that worse than being called bald? I don't think so. Naked head. <laughs> oh. Now that I hear it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. There's nothing wrong with a naked head. Oh, All right. the judge knows. That's fair. Now, do you like? Do you imagine your your head is just being real, like sensual, free, free, sensual. open? Oh, I'm trying yeah. to cut Mike off before he gets anywhere <laughs> weird with that. Um, I was going to talk about something. We have a giveaway right now at FootClanGiveaway.com. If you want to enter, you can. It's free to enter. Win a signed Kenny G jersey. Should be pretty sweet. Oh, I was going to mention we have a Halloween episode coming up, <laughs> which is exciting. Mm -hmm. And we've had, uh, we've gone to town over the years. I mean, we've had uh, the Michael Keaton Halloween episode where we were, what, Beetlejuice, Batman, and, and Multiplicity? Uh, that's correct. And we, what was last year? Last year, we went player nicknames. We had the Walrus. We had Chris Goblin. And... <laughs> What was the third? Uh, you were the, uh, wait, we had the Goblin. I was the Walrus. Oh, Sammy Watkins, the Lizard King. Yeah, ah. I was the Lizard King. The year before, Jason was Jeff Fisher. Oh, yeah. So we've got some good stuff in store for you this year. That will be, is that next Friday's episode? That is correct. Because Halloween is on a Saturday. It is, with a spooky blue moon. I feel like it should always, I think we've said this before, it should always be on a Saturday. Like or like the, a oh, like yeah. Thanksgiving, the last well, Saturday of Friday October. Friday or Saturday. Because my kids, you know, you want them to be able to stay up, get the vomiting done with by about midnight What's from the candy. It's silly. It's like, it's Monday this year. Yeah. Go out, go out and stay up till 11 o'clock, kids. <laughs> it's what dumb. Are you, what are you doing? Uh, we can we can get this changed, Mike. This is a priority. We do have, we have that influence. Yes. Yes. Because uh, we wear hats. <laughs> well, two thirds yeah. of us wear hats. Quick question of the day before we get into buy sell. Should you be able to drop bench players that have already played? Mm. So this is something that different platforms do differently. They, yes, they, they do. Um, this has been around forever, uh, but it seems like this year more than most, I've been approached people uh, on both sides of, of the, the opinion of saying, like, I've had people just – Furious, furious. They 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 slide my DMs. They're like, Mike, this so and so dropped a player off their bench, and they their game was already over. They played on Thursday night, and they dropped this player, and I am in, I am furious about it. Yeah. And, and then I I had a uh, a conversation with our one of our programmers Schneider, and he was like, What do you think like ethically about this? That it I have I can do this. My platform allows me to do it, and he was. He felt unsure should he be able to 
or should he take advantage of this? And I said, 100%. If it's on your platform, that means everybody can do it. This is part of the game. Uh, if if it's up to me, it would be off. If, if a player plays on Thursday, they're locked until the waiver period. But if your platform allows it, that means that everybody else can take advantage of this. And you should be taking advantage of this. If you have someone, like, throw... It, throw the backup running back for Thursday on your bench, and if the starter makes it through the game, no problems. Just cut that guy and add somebody else for the weekend. You, this is why we talk about the holistic approach of fantasy football. It's not just I, I drafted all the best players. It's no, know your league, know how people play, and know the rules and, and the scoring. If the rules say you can drop a player. That's what the rules say. And to my knowledge, all Yahoo leagues right. allow that. So you should always, if you have the opportunity to drop someone heading in, you know, someone that stunk and he was a flyer and he just is, it didn't work out, even going into Sunday night football, Monday night football, if you've got someone you know you're going to drop coming up, yep. you might as well just – Kick him to the dirt now and pick up a backup running back and see. <laughs> Kick him to the dirt. Uh, you know, and see if you get lucky. For the record, ESPN is the opposite. ESPN, by default, locks players, which means know your league settings and don't exactly. get stuck with a situation like I did last week where I, it just slipped my mind that, that Gronkowski, who was on my bench, played on Thursday and I had planned to drop him before Sunday because I didn't need him, and he ended up locked on my roster. Had a nice game. Now he's trade bait. But don't, know your league. Don't get mad because you're getting out hustled. It's mm -hmm. it. Mike's point though is it's fair for everybody. Yes. If the rule is the rule, everybody can do it. Yeah, so when, you're not getting one over just because you, you know the rules. When you said someone hit you up in your DMs, upset that this guy dropped someone after play. Uh, my my initial question is, is he the commissioner, and is this <laughs> the reason he was able to do it, or is that just something you can do? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Brooks, I didn't get a chance to look at the results for uh, week six by sell. How'd it turn out? We probably don't need to look. Pretty well for you. All right. It's rare when we have a, a sweep, so I'm going gonna, gonna to savor it. All right. Uh, I swept. You guys did not. Now, in fairness, <laughs> the only reason that you really swept is because you pushed the line on Terry McLaurin we we were all kind of against him, and then you're like, "Well, what?" Have, I forgot about and that, Jason. That is, that is a great point that you bring up here. That it was manipulated by the person who won. Yeah, yeah. Is this is it the commish that did it? <laughs> it's a problem. Is this a good segment if we all agree? I mean, come on. I was doing the fabulous hosting job slash winning. All right. Well, let's see what we so can we, do. In we so we did. Uh, we we had Jonathan Taylor, Terry McLaurin, Kirk Cousins last week. Let's let's buy sell for week seven. Devin Singletary. Facing the Jets, is he a top 20 running back this week? Mm. Really didn't see much from Zach Moss last week or Singletary. Uh, he was the wide receiver, running I'm sorry, back. running back 19 in week three, the running back 14 in week four. Buy, sell, I mean, the Jets, that's a juicy matchup, but Singletary is tough to predict. The, the matchup is the only reason you would possibly buy this, that Singletary is able to get enough work. The the Bills uh, try and project this game script. They trounce the Jets, and then they give it to Singletary. But that, that the problem with that projection is that could easily just turn into Zach Moss running out the game at the end, and this is an easy sell for me. That's exactly where I was going, Mike. I'm going to sell it. I think that if they trounce him, and it doesn't come with a Devin Singletary swing pass, lucky touchdown, he's not in that top 20. Zach Moss will run that ball at the end of the game. Now, what if we move the line <laughs> to 25? I'm Look, I'm selling completely. Uh, Singletary's been someone you cannot rely on. The touchdowns aren't usually there for him. And now that Zach Moss is back, there's, uh, there's no way I'm taking him as a top 20 back. Big Ben at Tennessee, a 250 passing yard game. He's only done it once this season. But Tennessee, they're cruising. This is a battle of undefeated AFC teams. Titans allowing 285 passing yards per game. That's the average. Big Ben, you know, this is a defensive football team. This is a team that can run the ball with James Conner. 
not a lot has been asked of Big Ben. Even this last week where there were high expectations, it was like 22 completions, which Kyler Murray's like, hold my beer. But uh, I don't know, 250 passing yards against the Titans. That's a good line, Brooks, and I'm going to sell it. I'm buying, man. I'm buying. I think that Tennessee can actually keep up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they – that's, that's they don't the want to ask it of Ben right now, but they will have to against the Titans. Yeah, they, you didn't need to against the New York Giants, against the Bill O'Brien Houston Texans, against the Eagles in last week when they demolished the Browns. They th Those are the games where Big Ben has failed. He, they haven't needed him to throw the ball, and they don't want him to have to. But I do think the Titans keep up even against this great Steelers defense, and if that's the case, Big Ben can get it done. Over 250, I'm buying. All right, the last one here. DJ Moore takes on the Saints. Buy or sell 75 receiving yards. He's hit that mark three out of six times this year. The Saints allowed only ha two wide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, it does not feel Actually, like it. Actually, it does not feel that way at all. I'm going to vet that. I'm going to vet that. Brooks has it's... been known to lie, but he's – No, he's, the last – so 93, the truth, 93 and 120. Yeah. Uh, he had 11 targets last week. No Curtis Samuel is the defining factor here to me with DJ Moore – the target volume, the reliability there ah, against the Saints. Is Curtis Samuel going to play? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I would like to push my buy-sell decision until I can find that out. Until the inactives on Sunday? I'm going to – oh, he's done it two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Yep. 93 yards 93. in both weeks. Yep. I'm going to decide I'll, after you two go. I will step in and buy. I think that the secondary of the Saints is, is you know, really, really hurt still. And you have, you know, the same argument we made with Big Ben. When you've got an offense that can keep up and cause Carolina to throw the ball more, DJ Moore is talented. I think the matchup is good. I will buy 75 yards he should have had a lot more than that last week if you watch the game dj moore had multiple drops yes he did and uh yeah 11 targets only five receptions <sighs> what do i do what do i do mike what are you doing i'm gonna buy it okay uh, if, if everything jason laid out i'm i'm in i think he can hit 75 uh, oh wow he's tied for the league lead in drops didn't even realize that uh i will i'm gonna sell it i'm gonna go sell 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 last week uh I defeated you both, and this week I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to sell it. I think it'll be close. Though. Oh, what? Me and Jason are just going to tie? Gross. Well, that means we'll both win. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. That was uh, buy or sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up. You can get some sweet sports memorabilia. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. There's not a ton. Mark Ingram diagnosed with a mid to high ankle sprain, but uh, that is not considered severe. Yeah, and they're on by this week. I mean, we talked about him in the waiver wire show yesterday. You can drop him if need be. You don't need I to because he's a running back that uh, is on a good running team. I want to believe that the way they diagnose the week, like how many weeks you miss, is they take out like a, a tape measure mm -hmm. and they yeah. say, where's the sprain? Point to the sprain mm. and they measure from the ground up. That's it, right. Each each inch is yeah. a week. Yeah. So mid to high, this is probably two to three inches up from the ankle. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's was, I mean, that thing was mid approaching the knee. <laughs> I was going to ask you, where does the uh, where does the ankle become the, the kind of leg? On the knob. Like On the, the knob? Yep, you can right go there. ankle all the way up to the knob? I'm I'm saying that's where you start the measurement, right on the <laughs> the little the knob. Oh, the bottom knob. Yeah. Not, I thought you were calling a knee a knob. No, that would be ridiculous. But where yeah, does no, the, the ankle knob? Everyone where does the ankle they... stop? I'm asking. Like oh. your ankle doesn't go all the way up to like your thigh. Uh, I mean, you ever you ever had a sprain bad enough? Is that a super high ankle sprain? <laughs> yes. Super. High. It's a quad contusion. Is a super high ankle sprain? Uh, what we did not mention on the waiver show. If you're heading into the weekend, let's say you can drop bench players and you're looking for someone to stash, uh, this is absolutely – you have a complete burner spot going into Sunday. Throw Gus Edwards on the back of your your bench because if Mark Ingram misses next week, which we don't know if that's actually going to happen or not, then Gus Edwards will be in play, and he'll be considered a hot waiver pickup next week. Yeah, they trust him. A little bit more than they do. J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins has more big playability. But they trust the Gus bus. And it he can get it done. He can. 
All right, Christian McCaffrey with the uh, high ankle sprain <laughs> will miss his fifth straight game in week seven, has a shot to return in week eight against the Falcons. Now, Jason, you mentioned uh, – Oh yeah, th yeah, thank you. Um, I I don't know I don't know how this happened. I had heard um, I think on 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 Twitter about a week nine buy for Christian McCaffrey, but that's not true at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember in the preseason uh, time looking at the week thirteen buy that a couple of teams have, and uh, because some leagues that's when playoffs start, and that's when Christian McCaffrey's buy is. So hopefully you do get uh, at least one more game before week ten. The week eight is a Thursday night game. So that's kind of advantageous in this situation. You already know he's out for week seven. In week eight, you're going to know, you know, ahead of the weekend. So continue to wait on Christian McCaffrey. And uh, this is not breaking news to anybody with eyeballs, but Sean McDermott admitted John Brown not 100%. I mean, the first play, he's hobbled. He, it seems like every fifth route he runs, he comes up limping. This has uh, been persistent. This has been re-aggravated in practice multiple times. So yeah, they need to let him rest in, in, you know, the last couple of weeks without him, it's not been the same in that offense, sure. in the passing game. All right. A reminder, your waiver claims went through today. Most likely drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Make sure you check and see who was dropped for those waiver pickups by your league mates. And uh, maybe somebody that uh, is on by perhaps. Perhaps slipped through, and you can grab them, and then you can you can kind of laugh and cackle when you uh, mm, a good a good hearty cackle. Yes, a hearty cackle. It's cackle season, as they say. All right, we're going to get into the Thursday night preview. Some mailbag questions. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor. You're familiar. It's Quip. Quip it good. You got to Quip it. Uh, they are here to keep us on track. They deliver those oral care essentials to you. And for many of us over the last six months, those daily routines, they've gone haywire. Things have gone sideways. People are having to make adjustments to make sure that they got what they need, and that's what Quip will do. They'll help you out. And good health starts with good habits. Quip makes it super easy for you to brush and floss better. The Quip electric toothbrush has timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide a dentist-recommended two-minute routine it's nice. It's something you don't even have to think about. You just get used to it. And they even made a size down version designed for kids. And this is like set and forget stuff with Quip. Um, we love our Quip. Uh, they got a cool little sticky case thing that sticks on the mirror. And oh, you it's just, great. Yeah, it's nice. And uh, if you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you'll get your first refill for free. That is your first refill free at getquip.com slash footballers. Uh, getquip.com slash footballers. Quip, the good habits company. And Foot Clan, if you're ready to start exploring again, plan a trip to a historic area with safety precautions in place. Independence, Missouri, where the heartland heritage still beats strong. It's just outside of Kansas City. Independence offers all the attractions of a big city, but boasts a small town feel. Now, a small town feel, Andy. Like that's, I don't really know a small town feel. No, not out here. No, uh, we, we know a track home feel. We got the big city. Yeah, we got a big city feel. So if you want to check out a small town feel, you know, Independence, Missouri, take a step back in time as you discover the legendary legacy of President Truman, who called Independence home. Uh, look, you like spooky ghosts? It's spooky season. That's what we're all hearing about. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Brave a path of reportedly haunted homes. I'm actually a, kind of afraid of on them. a ghost tour. If you dare take a breath of fresh air in wide open parks and hiking spots, plenty of room for social distancing and independence. And right now, you can find your independence at visitindependence.com to start writing your own great American story. Thursday Night Breakdown. All right, there's no more competitive division than the NFC East. It's definitely close. Uh, it's, <laughs> That's it's, true. A, it's a tight race. It was an incredible realization when Arizona defeated the Cowboys to move to 4-2, and two, the Cowboys dropping to 2-4, and four, and Comfortably. Much, much closer to a division uh, championship than the Cardinals were. Well, yeah, because they're in first. 
all yeah. alone in first after the drubbing. All right, so as Mike would say, we're ready for a real barn burner. Yes. Uh, the New York Giants yeah, get ready. <laughs> at 1-5 in five, take on the Philadelphia Eagles with a much better record at 1-4-1. One, one. Eagles are four-point favorites. It's a 43-point over-under. A reminder, take your Thursday oh. night players out of the flex. I'm playing Devonta Freeman in this game. Okay. So he's in my running back position, not a flex position. You got a bye week. I got a Jonathan Taylor bye week. I got to get somebody into my lineup. And I got to hope that Daniel Jones throws him the ball. But it's only a 43-point over-under. There aren't great expectations here from a scoring perspective. Lots of injuries and ineptitude to go around so far this year. However... Looking at the quarterback position, you know, Carson Wentz is an option. Who will he throw it to? I don't know. Travis Fulgham. Will he oh, win? Oh, man. Probably. Maybe. It's rough. They're an option. Yeah. I mean, Carson Wentz. So many options. Carson Wentz is an option because he has ended up a fantasy uh, option. <laughs> I mean, that's why. It, it, 11, yeah. 12, and 4. Three think, out of the last four weeks, he's been a top 12 quarterback. Yeah, I believe he's Jason's star, or stream, stream of the week, and I'm I'm with it. There's a couple leagues where, uh, you know, I've been I've been living that stream life with Ryan uh, Thickpatrick, and now i got to move on because he's on a bye week, and he has also been sent to the bench. Carson Wentz is an absolute fine option this week, despite... <laughs> Dead, dead last in completion percentage. That's not all on Carson Wentz. Some of it definitely is. Unfortunately, Miles Sanders is expected to be out. Could they just rule him out? Yes, of course they could. Oh, no. I know where that's coming from. Yeah. Somebody's uh, got a questionable tag on one of your platforms. Uh, th yeah, that would be correct. Uh, waivers, our waivers are about to run in five minutes. It would be great if I had that extra spot for a player everyone in the world knows is not going to play. But we can't rule him out just yet. He might he might just play. So uh, Wentz is an option. Miles Sanders will be out. Great Scott. Yeah, is they, it though? This is the, look, this is the big talking point. Is is Boston Scott will be the next man up for the Philadelphia Eagles. He has utilized in the passing game. He saw four targets last week. He saw nearly fifty percent, uh, or he was on the field for nearly fifty percent of the snaps. For the uh, for the Eagles, but man, Jason, you you were the OG Boston Scott guy. Uh, where's your confidence level in this matchup for Boston? Uh man, it's it's not very high. He hasn't looked good this season, specifically as a running back. He's always fine as a receiver. He's a he's a nice scat back option, and you know the Eagles really really need receiving options. So I do expect the Boston Scott will be fine. I put him very similar to Devonta Freeman on the other side of the ball. I feel like the matchup is better for Boston Scott. The you know, the Giants are giving up more fantasy points to the running back whereas the Eagles have been very stout with a very good defensive line there. Um but you will have Corey Clement involved in this game. He's not going to just come in and have the Miles Sanders role and Boston Scott's, you know, a little Itty bitty guy out there, so I, I I think you're talking about low low end RB twos, maybe only a flex option for for both of the running backs. Week one, Boston Scott was the leader of the backfield for Philadelphia against Washington because Miles Sanders started the season with an injury that turned into eleven opportunities. That's not that's not great. It was and it was nine carries and two targets. With waivers going through today. With the Thursday night game, you have to make a decision on Boston Scott. I mean, everybody has to make that decision. Do you believe that there's upside there or not? Mike, you gave the example. He had an opportunity earlier this year. I made the decision. Look, I have Devonta Freeman. Am I going to spin fab on the difference from Devonta Freeman to him? maybe Boston Scott? I feel like Boston Scott has the higher ceiling and the lower floor. Yeah. And so I just went with Freeman. I didn't even bother putting in a bid. I'm not even going to mess around with Boston Scott. Is is he going to get 11 opportunities to 15, I don't know. I I agree the matchup's better for whoever is the running back in Philadelphia. But let me let me bring up some of the more common start sit questions with Boston Scott because everybody's going to decide tonight. Maybe you picked him up on waivers and you're saying, hey, Boston Scott or Antonio Gibson against Dallas. Gibson. Yep. That's okay. not close. Uh, Boston Scott or Justin Jackson against Jacksonville. Justin Jackson. Yep. 
Boston Scott or Jarek McKinnon against New England? Jarek McKinnon. McKinnon. That one's much closer to me. You just are your you doubt McKinnon. He so does not much. doubt McKinnon. He hates he does. McKinnon to the core. Is he's just he doesn't like I, I think he got a bad email from him. Uh, is that what happened? Andy? Did you get a bad you get a one star? One star review from Jarek McKinnon? I have no problem with Jarek McKinnon. He cannot uh, from what I understand, McKinnon, like most players, he can't actually produce fantasy points if the ball's not in his hand. So if they don't give him the ball enough, that that is that is, true. That is one of the concerns. We've been down the road before with him, and I've I've been a little bit back off of him in the week when he was a must start for everybody else. I'm there again. If the depth chart changes later in the week, which you won't have the flexibility if you start Boston Scott to figure that out, you won't know whether you know Jeff Wilson's in the lineup. Um, if you want to wait on McKinnon, that's fine. He has New England. It's not a good matchup. McKinnon, I think, will do almost nothing on the ground. So that might be the same as Boston Scott tonight. Right. Uh, it's very close to me is what I said. I did not say I hated sure. Derek McKinnon. Oh, no, we no put not those, with your words. We put those words yeah. in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and so you're not playing Boston Scott in – Oh, no. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm really hoping you guys don't put waiver claims in on Boston Scott because I desperately need him on my team right now. Did you hear me talk about Dearness Johnson? Dan LaMichael in, P. Ryan? In my starting lineup. Will you give uh, the listeners the update when our waivers go through yeah, in a couple I, moments here? I will do that. And also, Can, just, can you tell us, since we're not going to place any more bids, what did you, with that running back rotation in a league where you're sitting 3-3. Th three and three, That is correct. And you need a win, and you've got LaMichael P. Ryan and Dearness Johnson. I'm guessing you spent up a little bit. Uh, well, I spent up as much as I could because, well, Dearness Johnson took all my fab and threw it into a furnace, mm. first off. Uh, I think I was. I think I ended up at like sixteen or okay. something, and that was really all I could do. I'm. I'm gonna. Have they gone through yet? I'm imagining that they're going through right I now. I don't. I'm gonna predict you don't get them. I will predict that as well. <laughs> uh, but I did not bid on him. So uh, good and, luck, Mike. And so week one, Boston Scott had those eleven opportunities, but Jason, you mentioned him. Corey Clement, he actually had eight opportunities as well. He's vanished. Uh, he has absolutely thrown a, a smoke bomb on the ground and done nothing. Uh, zero opportunities the past two weeks. But week one was six carries and two targets. There is, like, you can't go all in on Boston Scott and and think that Corey Clement is absolutely nothing. Did he win? He went for 17. That is correct. <laughs> oh, no, he did not. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, did somebody do the math? See, that's a good fantasy manager. They probably looked. They said, Mike needs him. What do I need to spend? Who, who got him? Anybody here? If, uh, if unfortunately, the my opponent got him, and he desperately needed him. Okay. Cool. So, cool. This is exciting. Cool. So, Dearness. He had J.D. McKissick as a starter. Oh, yeah. Those are I see those guys pretty similar, actually. Uh, Daniel Jones, Devonta Freeman. Uh, Jones is not an option. Freeman has had 15, 20, and 20 opportunities the last three weeks. He is cemented at the top of a depth chart where you're hoping for a touchdown. You're hoping for some passing game work. I think, uh, like I said, I'd start him over Boston Scott myself for the guaranteed opportunities. Uh, would you play Devonta Freeman or Jarek McKinnon? I just want to see how much you guys uh, how much have been paid. <laughs> I lean Jarek McKinnon. I do as well. All right. A lot of money is the answer. Uh, the Eagles are such a stout run. D. I do think that the floor is pretty high for Freeman because of the opportunities. Um, but this is a game in general. I don't expect – I mean, it's the lowest over-under of the week. I'm not sure I would take the over on it, a divisional matchup where usually you're like, oh, good, I get to play the Giants. Oh, good, I get to play the Eagles. But instead, it's each other, and you're going, this game is going to be trash. Yeah, Eagles currently eighth against fantasy running backs. So not a great matchup. Yeah, I agree. Give me 20 chances, though. Darius Slayton, Travis Fulgham. Hmm. Hmm. Let's look at the wide receivers in this game. What is the latest in Philadelphia at the wide receiver position, too? Because we had uh, – isn't there Jalen Rager rumors ab so the, abounding? We did get a little bit of a rumor or a, an update on both Goddard and Jalen Rager. It sounds like neither of them will be suiting up for tonight. Okay. All right. They'll get there now. They're 10 days to get right. Yep. And Deshaun Jackson is expected to play. Uh, I mean, I'm still playing Travis Fulgham over him, over Deshaun Jackson. Do are you? Does Djax concern you at all for the the breakout that we've seen the last couple of weeks for Fulgham? I don't think so because I watched Deshaun Jackson on the field for the first few weeks, and he's not a high volume situation. I 
I would play Fulgham tonight. Yeah, I, I I think I would as well. Over Darius Slayton, um, the the targets have just been there for Travis Fulgham. When you're getting that many, uh, you know the the worry that I have is more along the lines of you know they were down by so much uh, against the Ravens and they had to just keep throwing the ball and throwing the ball and then he's forced to go to Fulgham and I like that for fantasy. This isn't a game where I feel like he's going to have to keep forcing the ball to Fulgham. But it could be a blessing in disguise that their running game doesn't work with Miles Sanders out of the way when when it comes to Travis Fulgham. All right. Uh, any other options in the passing game then for Philadelphia? No Zach Ertz this week. It's just do you have the desperation to play Richard Rodgers? Nope. No, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up with four, uh, four catches or something. Yep, if he gets in the end zone. He could end up having a good week, but I, I – I can't possibly say that the process says to start him. What about the other wide receivers in New York? No, Golden Tate has been trash terrible. Yeah, he has. Uh, Sterling Shepard, uh, he could be back this week, but that's doubtful right now. All right, Evan Ingram. They, I don't know what that's the, the one is. area where the Eagles are vulnerable, at least historically this year. Twenty ninth against opposing fantasy tight ends. Yeah, we've we've gone into too many. Evan Ingram has had juicy matchups I know. lined up. I don't know what they're doing with Evan Ingram. The it's they had already picked up his fifth year option. Like you're not using this player. You you are not maximizing the talent of Evan Ingram. It's incredibly frustrating. Yeah, it is, and uh, hard to expect it to change. I I do not at this point. I'm out. All right, anything else from this game that you guys want to break down? Any sneaky snarts on a low over-under Thursday night NFC East bash? Nope. Okay, all right. It's probably time for some mailbag then. Mailbag. Mailbag! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> all right, if you have a question for the Fantasy Footballers podcast, you can go to the website. Great news, though, guys. Yeah. I got you, Michael Hasty. Oh, did you now? Yeah. Get ready for that experience, whoever I'm playing. Oh, we tied, and you had the tiebreaker. Yeah, take that. Oh, man. You're you're in for some pain. Uh, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We'll kick it off with a voicemail. What's up, ballers? Big fan of the show. This is Paul in Chicago. My question is, who do you guys think is going to have more PPR points the rest of the season, Antonio Gibson or Miles Gaskin? Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Oof. Unfortunately, that's not a very difficult question. For it me. is not. It's Miles Gaskin. Yeah, the, the PPR makes it even easier. The, the gas man has been running on full these yeah. days. Even with the transition to Tua here, I, I can't expect the volume to, for, for Miles to change very much. And the Washington just, when they're losing, they're far more often going to uh, J.D. McKissick than Antonio Gibson. I, I think they it is. They're also always losing. Yeah, that's, the, that was, <laughs> that's, that's, that's part of it. That's um, the subtweet. I, it, it's very close to me precisely because of the changeover. If Fitzpatrick was the quarterback and you knew Gaskin is going to continue to get these targets, these dump-offs, uh, the, then you're right. It's 100% not even close because in a full PPR league, Gaskin is valuable. But we've seen quarterback changes completely and drastically change whether or not a running back is targeted. And usually those, the, you know, them old quarterbacks, they know when to just check it down to that right. running back. I, I don't have the same confidence that Tua will use Gaskin that way. And I think as the season goes on, I would expect Gibson to continue to get more and more involved. I, I don't think that by the end of the season, uh, you know, if there's a shift between McKissick and Gibson, that it's going to be in the favor of McKissick. Um, well, the, I, I, I do lean Gibson here, or I'm sorry, Gaskin, but I, I want to vocalize that there could be changes here that scare me. Well, the thing about Miles Gaskin, for what it's worth, the last two weeks, Five for 34 and four for 35 through the air. So it's nice to have the catches. But he's getting a ton of work on the ground. He's been a top 10 running back two straight weeks. He's had 18 attempts, 16 attempts on the ground. If they try, try to take the pressure off, it's going to be through Miles Gaskin. Yep, and he's the, the he's the goal line back now. 
with Jordan Howard being a healthy scratch. Corey in Baton Rouge has a question for us. What do you do with Kenyon Drake after his two-touchdown performance last night? I've seen this all over Twitter. Uh, listeners asking questions. Is this cash in time for Kenyon Drake? Seattle this week. Yeah, I mean, that that's... <laughs> The the thing you need to decide is do you trade high or do you hold? And uh, it's always a matter of who. So let me ask some names, and you guys can tell me if you would rather have Drake or this running back for the rest of the season. We'll start uh, – you want to start high or you want to start low? Hmm? Uh, you're the one running this game, bro. All right. We'll start. Uh, we'll start in the middle. Would you rather have <laughs> – Kenyon Drake or now Clyde Edwards Alaire with Le'Veon Bell? Oh, that's an interesting question. Uh I'll take Clyde. I'll take Clyde. I probably would as well. And that's one you might be able to get a trade done. Would you take Kenyon Drake or DeAndre Swift breakout rookie candidate? I will go with DeAndre Swift. I will take Kenyon Drake. That is a super easy Kenyon Drake for me. Um, would you rather have James Robinson or Kenyon Drake? I will go with James Robinson. I, whew, for, I'll take Kenyon Drake. I would go Drake there as well. So, I mean, it really is a matter of who you could move on from, but the point is he gets a ton of volume. He has yes. stunk with the volume, but it comes and then all of a sudden fantasy uh, greatness happens when you get two touchdowns. So, don't trade him for nothing. Agreed. All right, voicemail question. Hey, ballers. This is Liz from Mobile, Alabama. Love this show. So I got Mike Williams off the waiver wires last week, and so I'm contemplating him or Terry McLaurin for my flex. Thanks, guys. All right, what do you think? Mike Williams or Scary Terry this week? The matchup uh, at a broad level for, for Scary Terry is great. Yes. As was the target totals for Terry McLaurin last week. They were very high. Uh, I am a fan of, of Scary Terry. There is some concern with the matchup with Diggs in Dallas because of what he did last week against DeAndre Hopkins. I am not concerned about that with Scary Terry and his ability to separate at every level. There is no one else to pass to. They actually just signed uh, uh, Robert... Uh, why is the name escaping me? The former... Deep Foster. Robert Foster. Mm. Uh, because they need somebody outside of Scary Terry in that in that uh, wide receiver room. I'm actually targeting Terry McLaurin in most leagues as a kind of buy low situation because he's a top five target guy in football right now. So I would not pivot to Mike Williams. Yeah, I 100% agree. I like Mike Williams as as a flex this week, but Terry McLaurin is someone that you don't want to take out of your lineup. The targets are there, the talent is there, and this week the matchup is there. He he should he should be started. Yeah, he's he's averaging nearly 10 targets a game. I mean, that's absolutely outstanding val or uh, uh, volume. Washington is going to be trailing. A Andy Dalton will be able to get something done against Washington, and Terry McLaurin is the he's the option. All right, uh, this is a tough one. Instagram, is Cooper Cup still a must start? Because last week, only three catches on nine targets. The week before, five on eight targets. Uh, he had a couple of big weeks in weeks three and four, but he's really been disappointing outside of that. This passing offense has not been high volume. And uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I love the target totals, but it was not good last week. Yeah, I, I think Cup is someone that, I mean, when we say must start, we mean in a usual league, you're going to want to start him week in and week out. If, you know, if your roster happens to have, you know, you you got Diggs and Tyler Lockett and A.J. Brown, well, then sure, I'm not going to start Cup necessarily over that trifecta. But Would you describe him as a must start? But I would usually describe Cooper Cup still as a must start. Um, and so I wanted to give that caveat of obviously it depends on who you have, but what we saw last week was should have been a good game from Cooper Cup. I mean, he dropped a touchdown and was, you know, a, a, a wrong shoulder look over a deep bomb target. Uh, I trust Cooper Cup as, uh, as a player. I trust Sean McVay as a coach. I like the offense. Every wide receiver, we've been really begging the table with this this year so that our fantasy, you know, players, understand 
every wide receiver out there is super volatile. They all have bad games. So don't let bad games for a wide receiver say, ah, he's had two in a row bad. I can't start him. They're all going to have two bad games in a row at some point this season. When you're in it, it feels difficult to overcome. Who would you rather be starting right now? Cooper Cup or T. Higgins? Cooper Cup. I agree with that. Cooper, okay. Well, then no. I think the touchdown opportunity for those two players is just so vastly different. All right. Cooper Cup or Brandon Cooks? Well, I would I, rather start Cup. Yeah. All right. You guys are, clearly are still very in on Cooper Cup then. Yeah, that's... That's what I was saying. I, I'm just. Are the, you are you on the other side of those uh, two? He, are you, he is, so he is not must start to you. the The offense is this is a different Rams offense. Of they like, they got a matchup here against Chicago. What do you think the game script is going to be for the Rams against the Chicago Bears? Do you do you think the magician and Nick Foles can score a bunch of points on the Rams, or is this going to be Daryl Henderson sees another twenty carry game? I think it'll be uh, a game where they're going to run the ball. This isn't a great matchup for Cooper Cup. Uh, it'll be a, a, a hard-fought banger. Were your questions like this week only, or was it the, rest the, of this, season? No, I was talking rest of season. Like, Yeah, there's just, no way I'm taking Brandon Cooks over Cooper Cup rest of season, chasing a couple of weeks from Brandon Cooks. Okay. Um, hopefully the targets, much like Terry McLaurin, turn into value. And Jason's point is pretty – important to your emotional health as a fantasy football player just to bring it back to that if all wide receivers have inconsistent weeks just look at Tyreek Hill this past week and you are playing fantasy football expecting the same production every single week from those players you are it's an exercise in futility to get upset over it every single time you have to start the best players and you have to start them consistently you know, it was basically one play for DeAndre Hopkins this past week against that terrible sure. uh, Dallas defense that gave up all of those points. So I just think it's, it is an important reminder when you look at it. And that's why we highlight and give you tools like the snapshot tool, which show consistency over time so that it can illustrate it in a very visual way which players are the most consistent. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. The number three wide receiver on the season, DeAndre Hopkins has not been a top 36 option two of the last three weeks. It happens to everybody. Don't bench him. <laughs> He's yep. Hopkins. And we added a consistency score to the advanced stats area, and Cooper Cup is a B. It's 56.3% of the time he has exceeded a usable benchmark at the position, which is in the upper echelon of consistency despite you know, only having two top 20 games this year. Yeah, and that that's over his last 16. That metric is rolling over 16 games. And if you remember, he didn't have the best end of the season, and he's still a B relative to the wide receiver position. I will say this, though, Mike. you Based on your um, uh, kind of tone of voice, you would play Brandon Cook's rest of season over Cooper Cup? Uh, I'm, I can't say for sure that I would, but I'm, my concern here for, for Cooper Cup is – his two good games, he, when he was a wide receiver 8, wide receiver 15, he scored. Like Cooper Cup, and I mean, he's been a touchdown guy. He, he led or was tied for the league in, in touchdown receptions last year. But this year, through six games, if he doesn't score, you didn't get a very good game for Cooper Cup. And like Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks doesn't have to score. Brandon Cooks can easily hit that 100-yard mark, and the, the Texans look like things are changing for the better over the past two weeks. Did either of you guys get to see the Laramie Tunzel yes. video I posted? Yes, it was impressive. Yeah. I, I felt like I was Laramie Tunzel in that situation. I was blocking both of you guys in the buy-sell segment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you were talking about Jarek McKinnon. <laughs> oh, that, that is accurate <laughs> as well. Um, when do your jerseys arrive? Oh, I. What, you think we don't already have them? Come on, right. get out of I'm here. Stupid. <laughs> All right, voicemail question. What's up, ballers? Uh, this is Jesse from Minneapolis. I just uh, started a podcast for our Dynasty League, and I wanted to know if you have any suggestions for segments or bits or any general podcast questions for a new guy. <laughs> Love the show. Thanks. Bye. Uh, what do you guys think? A lot of people out there, if you're new to the show, if you haven't heard about our history, our show started with Mike and I mm -hmm. making a league podcast like uh, this gentleman is talking about as a way to 
mostly insult our league mates uh, yes. in a formal fashion. Yes. I would also say entertain. Yeah. Um, but that, that's how we did it. We entertained by insulting. That's, it, that's true. That's I mean, very true. You're gonna, it, it's dynasty. So you're you're going to be breaking down trades, and you're going to be breaking down start sit start sit decisions in a dynasty league. It's, especially if you've got a double flex or something like that. That's that's the juicy stuff. I'm I'm going to give you a segment. All right. I'm going to give you if you're doing a dynasty league podcast. I'm going to give you. You got to do some trade reflections. That's your segment. Yeah, go because back. Because go back in time. We've done this in our Dynasty League. Sometimes trades happen, and you're like, this is the most one-sided, lopsided trade. And two years later, you look, and you're like, I am the dumbest person on earth for making this trade. <laughs> when there was a trade between our own Al Borland mm -hmm. and uh, Mike the Fantasy Hitman right. Wright, oh, my goodness, was it a fleecing. It was a first-rounder and, and, and Michael Crabtree. For Aaron Jones. For, for Aaron Jones, who had just had, I think, his second good game of his career. And Crabtree was a very legitimate, necessary, good fantasy wide receiver at this time. And it was mocked profusely. It was unbelievable that he would do that. And now we look back and it's like, wow. Oh, was, Mike, you got screwed. You I did. You <laughs> were the dumb one. And uh, Al Borland just dominated that trade. so that's that's kind of how the segment would go right mm -hmm. there you'd get a chance to mock somebody for not knowing the future which is my favorite thing i get mocked all the time for not knowing the future on on twitter so and i would throw out it's always fun to look at the upcoming matchups and the week behind as well all right start sit question week seven uh from twitter drew wants to know who should i start julian edelman against san francisco no or lavisca chenault against the chargers that's LaVisca Chenault. I know Chenault's coming off a bad game. But something's wrong with Julian Edelman. The the he now is avoiding contact. He's not utilized heavily in the offense. I'm I'm out on Edelman until I see otherwise. Now now let me ask. Let me dig a little deeper here, Mike, because okay. we've we've been quick as as Brandon Cooks knows mm -hmm. to you know retire players. Now Edelman has a uh, there's a pretty good resume. He's older. Sure. Are you ready? Am I ready to retire him? Yeah. Are you ready no, to no, retire no. Julian Edelman? No, I want. I'm retiring him to my bench. I mean, because he missed an entire week. I mean, he had the bye week. But the last three games he's on been on the field. I don't know. He might be done. He he might be, but he is. He's on my bench. He does have one great game this year. That's so, true. So I'm, I am get it that, that it looks it looks bad right now, but I would not drop Julie Dunn. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't either. You've got to have the context. You go back and you've got, you know, uh, a game where, you know, this last week they lost offensive linemen to you know, the COVID IR list, and that line was just completely a mess. And so some of what we saw last week in the passing game just being atrocious – was protection issues uh, for for Cam Newton. So I, I wouldn't drop Edelman, but I would play LaVisca Chenault this week over over Edelman. And also, the week prior to the bye was without Cam Newton. So, you know, if you've got uh, a Cam Newton without an offensive line, a backup, maybe Edelman is more okay than we think. Okay. I think I'm done with him. I'm pretty much done with everybody in New England, though, from an offensive standpoint, just because – it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen there, even with Cam Newton in the passing volume in that offense. So, Oh, really? I was going to say outside of Cam, you mean? No, not outside of Cam. Cam, it, we had the question last week before the game of whether he's a must-start at the quarterback position. I don't view him as a must-start. Yeah, I mean, he was the quarterback 11 this past week with no offensive line and a terrible – I mean, when you've got that rushing baseline, I, I'm, I'm certainly not out on Cam yet. Yeah, he's been a – uh, top 12 quarterback in three of four games. Sure, sure. All right, uh, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. We'll be back tomorrow with matchup starts of the week. And there'll be more mailbag and questions answered later today at jointhefoot.com. We've got our weekly bonus episode for supporters of the show. Bonus. At jointhefoot.com. But that'll do it for Jason. That'll do it for Jason. Mm, and Mike. See you later, and myself. Everybody. All right. Thursday Night Football tomorrow, Mike. I hope you got your football time ready. Oh, it's ready. <laughs> See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.